Today, I'm starting to dehydrate my food for hiking season. I've done a decent amount of dehydrating in the past, but I haven't done it for a couple years. But now that I'm here in an apartment, I have my dehydrator and I'm going to start off with making two of the meals that I know worked well in the past. And I want you to help me. So you're gonna be here joining me as I make the food, dehydrate it, and then show you the results. So let's get started. So today I'm making a vegetarian chili and a red Thai curry. Something that surprised me about dehydrating was that basically you can just cook food as normal. Like there's a few tweaks and I'll talk about them as I go, but basically you just cook meals like you would make meals normally and then you just dehydrate them. It's actually a lot more simple than I originally thought. And if you're feeling nervous about doing your own dehydrating, don't. You can do it and I'm gonna show you how simple it is. On this side, I'm gonna make chili. So I've got garlic, onions, and mushrooms for both dishes, but then, whoop, <laughs> stay. Um, but then I'm going to add peppers, carrots, celery, and then a can of corn, black beans, and red kidney beans. And then for this one, I'm gonna do a red Thai curry. So I actually really like using this red curry paste from Thai Kitchen. Um, for the veggies, onion, garlic, mushrooms, ginger, lime, cauliflower, peppers, jalapeno pepper. I'm gonna add some pineapple to add some sweetness, coconut milk, and I've got rice noodles to go with it. Dehydrating tip number one starts when you start chopping. So you wanna try to cut every bit a similar size. They are all gonna be the way that I dehydrate meals usually is that I dehydrate the whole meal together. Some meals that's different, so that's not always the case, but usually I'm dehydrating the whole meal together. So if everything is a similar size, not only is it going to dehydrate at a similar rate, but it also will rehydrate at a similar rate. I'm gonna dice everything into little cubes. Okay, nicely diced. No tears. Okay, moving on to the mushrooms. When you're thinking about meals you want in the backcountry, there's a few different things that I think are important to consider. You wanna make sure the meals have enough calories. That's probably the most important thing. But you also wanna make sure that they have some complexity to them. So they have some fats, some protein. I eat fully plant-based, so the meals you'll see me make don't have meat. You also want to make meals that have enough fiber in them. Really, really important to eat fiber to keep your bowels happy and healthy. And that's why I'm adding things like celery. Um, celery doesn't have very many calories, but it's gonna give you that dose of fiber. But because the veggies are dehydrated, they're not heavy to carry in that extra little bit of fiber. And it's worth it in my opinion. Okay, the mushrooms and onions are ready. I like to cook my mushrooms first and really cook them down, so I'm gonna do that. Food dehydration tip number two is go really minimal on any added oil. So I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit, and that's probably all the oil I'll add for both of these dishes. So when you're trying to go low oil when you're cooking, um, I find if you just use like a splash of water, that can act similarly to oil and it'll melt, not melt, it'll evaporate off. So it's not gonna make things soggy. This, so you can't really see water, just like a little bit around each little thing. So it's a minimal amount of water, but that helps it cook. You might be wondering what I'm dehydrating for, and I actually don't know for sure what hikes I'm gonna do this season yet. It's all in the works still, but basically I'm not exactly sure, but I know I wanna be hiking a lot. So I'm just gonna start making a ton of meals, dehydrating tons of food, and then I'll be set for the summer. And if I have any left, I'll just use it for fall and winter. So it's a win-win. ginger and jalapeno 
into the red Thai curry pot. Garlic as well into the chili, into the curry. Adding in the celery to the chili. Okay, it's time for me to add the tomato to the chili. So I got organic strained tomatoes. Okay, so stir that in. Secret ingredient for my chili is the Canadian maple syrup. I think chili is really good when it has some sweetness. So I'm just pouring some in. And I'm gonna do it to taste. I don't know exactly how much because every time I make chili, there's different amounts of everything. I've got chili powder. Okay, dehydration tip number three is to actually make this more flavorful than you would normally like it. Because I find that some of the spices dampen after the dehydration and rehydration process. So what I'll do is I'll taste it when it's ready and I'll add more spices if I need to. I was letting the cauliflower cook down a little bit, but I think it's time to add that curry flavor, which is so delicious. Go for more flavor than you probably would normally do. So I'm gonna do two generous scoops and I'll probably add more later. Okay, time to add the red pepper. It's all ready for that step, which means we're also ready to add the coconut milk, which is very, very, very exciting. Whoa. And normally I would get like the full, normal, regular coconut milk, but I actually got the light because it's gonna have less fat content because I'm doing the dehydration. So that's another thing I'm doing differently. Wow, oh, that's looking unreal. I can already tell I don't think I put enough curry paste in. The chili is simmering. Ooh. Okay, it's time to open my cans. I've got a lot of different cans here. And I haven't used our can opener yet. So this could be interesting. So this is where I'm getting my pack of protein in this meal, is my beans. Okay, I'm at the stage now where my meals are just simmering and I just need to add the things that basically just need to warm up. They don't need to cook. And then I can lay it all out on the dehydrator. Toppings. Oh, Brian's home. The toppings that I would maybe normally put on, like cilantro for the curry or shredded cheese for the chili, I'm not gonna have in the back country, but that's okay. It's still gonna be like unreal. Like anything camping when you eat it is just so good. Okay, time to add the beans and corn. Oh God, that splashed. That splashed. Look at that beaut. Okay, it's time to add the lime into here. So I'm gonna do a taste test and see if I need to add more of the curry paste. Mm. That is delightful. Needs a little bit more salt, a little bit more curry paste, a little bit more syrup. Okay, my husband Brian is here to help me taste test these. So come on over, Brian. This is a red Thai curry. Mm, the flavor is quite alive. I think that's gonna dehydrate really well. 
Does it need any more of this? You could always just add a pinch more salt, but th that's that's it. No more paste? No. Mmm. Yeah, you've nailed it. These are excellent. Really? Nothing to add? No. I thought it was spicy enough, so I didn't add any more chili. I agree. Okay, you think they're both good? I think that's amazing, yeah. Okay, great. Do I get to have lunch? Well, there's more of the chili. So I'll have So I think we should do that. This is my homemade bread. Delicious bread. You've really started to nail it. A brief intermission from prepping and then dehydrating to eat some lunch and sample what I just made. And then after lunch, I'll be setting everything up on the dehydrator. I'll show you all of that. Mm -mm -mm. That was a lovely combo. Packed with protein. I tried to make all the bits the same size. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's time for me to get my dehydrator out. I got this dehydrator at Canadian Tire. I think it was about $120. It's just a very basic household dehydrator. And so far, it's worked great. Okay, so it came with one of these trays, which works really good for anything liquidy. And then it's got multiple stacks. So what I do for the other spots is I, this one's for fruit, so I don't need that right now. And what I do is I'll use parchment paper. Okay, so depending on the size of the roll, I think, yeah, it'll fit better this way. I made that one too small. I fold it so the edges aren't overhanging and then I need to, well, I actually don't know if this is a necessary step, but I always do it, is I cut this out because I feel like it's probably good for this air to be able to flow through here. It's always worked out for me. Okay, so then the next step is literally super straightforward. I just take a scoop. Um, let me move this closer so I don't spill too much. And I just put it on. And you want to try to make sure you don't do too thick of a layer. You want it to be able to spread out pretty well. Um, I find when I make it too thick, what ends up happening is it just takes forever to dehydrate. Okay, so I'm happy with that coverage. Got the whole thing covered. Okay, next tray, I just put it right on top. This time I'm going to make a slightly bigger piece of parchment so that it can overhang. So now it's kind of more, like you can see all at the edges, all at the edges, I'll be able to get stuff right up to the edge. So that's the better technique. I'm working out the kinks here. Okay, that's it. That's my last layer of my curry here. Just folding these corners in a little bit. Okay, exact same technique for the chili. Just scoop it on. Okay, first layer done. This seemed a lot more efficient than <laughs> when I was doing the curry, but okay, I'm getting into the rhythm. Okay, this is the last tray. And this is, I'm gonna use this plastic. Okay, so I wasn't able to put all my chili, so I'll have to do another round, but that's it. That's fully filled up dehydrator, pop the lid on, and then I need to turn it on. Oh wow, you can really set it for a lot of hours. I'm gonna set it for, okay, I'm gonna set it for 12 hours, and then I wanna put it at the highest 160. Start. Okay, the dehydrator's on. 
And I'm a tiny bit concerned because it sounds different than I remember. It sounds like it's laboring, like maybe the fan maybe got bumped in transport or something. Like it doesn't sound quite right. Maybe it just needs to work out the kinks. So fingers crossed it still works. Okay, so this is after 10 seconds of dehydrating, still very liquidy. And I will show you what it looks like tomorrow morning. Good morning. It's loud in here right now. This has been running overnight. And something that we haven't experienced before is actually this apartment is a studio. So we were sleeping like four feet from this and it's quite noisy. So I had earplugs in, I was okay. Brian didn't, he woke up every couple hours. So we might need to figure out a better strategy or just both wear earplugs. But anyway, this has been going since like 2 p.m. yesterday or 3 p.m. I don't know, I'll put the time on the screen here. So it's time to check the food out, see how dehydrated it is. Okay, let's check it out. So here's the chili. So what I'm looking for is I want there to be no water. So you can see there's no visible water. This sauce part is completely dry. The beans feel pretty dry. I don't want there to be any like squishiness. What are those ones again? Oh, that's mushrooms. mushroom. I think that's the pineapple right there. Wow, that's gonna be a really nice one. That is gonna pack down so small. And it's nice, you can see the oil got absorbed into the parchment paper. Yeah. That's actually a good thing. That's true. Yeah, that that's... feels good. Yeah, they're all done. Okay, that's great. So all of them completely dried in that time period. So it was from the afternoon until this morning. I guess it's actually like almost noon today. They may have been ready sooner, but I didn't want it to shut off and then um, for the food to sit a little bit wet still because that's when it can grow mold or it can get gross. So now what I like to do, I'd like to figure out a more sustainable way, but for now, what I like to do is vacuum seal it so that it will last longer. Okay, so what I've discovered over time is you can transfer all the contents into a bowl and then vacuum seal it after because you want to break everything up. So you'll see that although this is easier in terms of setup, it's harder to get meals off of this thing, I find. Okay, that's good enough. From what I recall, the parchment is a lot easier. Whoa. Oh no. The parchment is just disintegrating. <laughs> but I'm getting lots of bits off. So there we go. I got much more off the parchment. The parchment did rip off, but I think it's okay. There's a piece. Okay, so the next step is I wanna break up some of these bigger chunks. So I'm just gonna literally get my hands in there. My hands I made sure are super dry. And I'm just gonna break it up. I've noticed that it's, um, it vacuum seals better when all those bigger chunks are broken up and it rehydrates better as well. There she is in all her beauty, super dry. That's what it looks like. The pineapple dehydrated super. Look at that's just falling off. Super easy. Just falling off in these big chunks. Here you have it. Nice and clean. So there's the chunks. Quite big chunks. So I'll have to do a lot of breaking up of this stuff. There we go. Wow, look at that, that's a really full bowl. 
So now I'm gonna break it up. chili and watermelon layer. Okay, I added some pineapple. I'm using canned pineapple. I still had space, so I decided to do a couple of my kiwis as well. Okay, pineapple. Kiwi. Let's go through the layers again. So we've got chili, chili and watermelon, watermelon, pineapple, pineapple and some kiwi. chili. So there we have it, two servings of the chili. Okay, so that's it from start to finish. I've got all three different ones vacuum sealed now. So I've got two servings of the chili, two servings of the Thai curry, and a single serving of the Thai curry. So look at how small that is. And actually I should wait to tell you how light it is. This is 144 grams when I weighed it, and this is 70. So, <laughs> wow, I did a really good job. So I've got two servings of the red Thai curry in here, one serving, so this will be for me when I'm out solo. And this is what we are gonna eat on the West Coast Trail for one of the nights, Brian and I. And then I've got the two servings of chili in here. That's, I think, gonna weigh more. That weighs 200 grams. So this is going to be really, really filling. So we'll want to eat this on a big day of hiking. So Brian and I decided we wanted chili and red Thai curry on the West Coast Trail, so I'll need to make another few meals for that. But this is how they turned out. So they're looking really, really good. I'll store them somewhere cool and dry in here, not in the direct sunlight. And then I'm gonna plan to eat these in July. We're probably gonna be eating them maybe into August. So they'll definitely last until then. I just paused the dehydrator, so it's still going. I'm gonna have two single servings of chili to pull off the dehydrator out of those two batches of food I did. So that means I'll have three single servings and two double servings from that. So that's quite a lot of food. That's a lot of days of hiking already just from one session. I'll need to do a lot more, but it's gonna be worth it. And I still have the fruit going, so I'm gonna hopefully check that out. Nice and dry. Here's kiwi. It all turned out so good. Thank you so much for watching this video. It was so fun to take you along and to really get back into it myself. I really hope these tips help you if you're wanting to dehydrate your own food or you already do. And yeah, those are just the tips I've learned over time. The ones from today were to make sure it's really, really dry and also break it into small pieces and then figure out what storage technique you wanna do. 
And yeah, if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please do so. It really, really helps me out on here. And if you want to be notified when I post videos, you can hit that bell button. I also go live right now. It's usually on Wednesdays, so you'll be notified when I go live as well. Thank you so much. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Bye.